Hello everyone, welcome back to another vegan and partially gluten-free recipe on this channel. Today I'm making one of my all-time favorite dishes. To be honest, I would probably pick this if I was exiled to an island for the rest of my life and only could pick one meal. It's this batch of shirawat. For those of you who don't know, I'm Ethiopian and shirawat has been a long time Ethiopian favorite of mine. It's actually made from chickpea powder, so it's a wonderful plant-based Based protein dish. There's 11 total ingredients in this recipe, including the traditional flatbread that you eat Ethiopian food with, which is called injera. Let's first go through each of the 11 ingredients in this shirawat recipe one by one super quickly, and then we'll get to the recipe steps. First up, there's one half cup of this mitten shiro powder. So for those of you who have never heard of this or have never made shirawat before, you can use plain chickpea powder or flour, but in this case, I actually went to an Ethiopian market and bought this shiro powder. There's also two medium diced tomatoes, one diced red onion, eight chopped cloves of garlic, four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, two tablespoons of Burberry powder, which is a spice blend that's used in Ethiopian food, two red chili peppers. I'll be using a pair of scissors to cut them open because the heat from these peppers comes from the seeds in side. Definitely feel free to omit these all together if you don't like heat in your food because they do add quite a bit of spice. One teaspoon of paprika, two cups of water, some salt to taste, and finally some injera bread which is a spongy flatbread that you use to pick up and eat Ethiopian food. For those of you who are curious about this injera that I picked up for this meal, I'm going to link the short that I made about my adventure to Lucy's Market here in Minneapolis. It's an Ethiopian restaurant and marketplace, so they have these shelves toward the back where you can pick up different groceries. They sell shiro powder there. It just was a lovely space. And I actually surprisingly ran into my dad and a couple of his Habisha friends there. So definitely go and check that short out that I linked above. Anyways, let's go over the eight steps to make this shiro wat. And I've linked the recipe down below if you'd like to follow along with me and make some of this shiro wat yourself. I've made a few modifications to the recipe, but for the most part, I'm sticking very closely to it. For step number one, I'll saute the chopped red onion in two tablespoons of the extra virgin olive oil in my saucepan, which I have all ready to go over on my stovetop. I'll saute the red onion for about 10 minutes on medium heat until it's looking nice and browned. For step number two, I'll add in the chopped garlic and saute that for about two minutes. For step number three, I'll stir in the chopped tomatoes and let them cook until they're very soft soft and pulpy. That should take about five minutes. For step number four, I'll stir in the one half cup of shiro powder and mix that together with everything in the saucepan until there's no dry powder visible. For step number five, I'll add in the Burberry powder, the paprika, the two remaining tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, and the two cups of water. For step number six, I'll bring the mixture in the saucepan up to a boil, then I'll reduce it down to medium low heat, put the cover on the saucepan and let the mixture cook for about 15 minutes. For step number seven, I'll remove the saucepan from heat and mix in the two red chili peppers and the salt. And finally, for step number eight, I'll dish up the shirawat on a lovely plate of injera bread, dig into it, and let you know what I think. That's everything you need to know about this vegan shirawat recipe, and I should mention here the actual shirawat stew is vegan and gluten-free. However, the injera bread that I bought today does contain wheat flour and barley flour, and those do have gluten. So the injera is vegan, but not gluten-free. Without further ado, let's head over to my stovetop where pretty much all the action is gonna be taking place for this shirawat recipe.
we've made it now to the last step, step number eight. I may or may not have been snacking on the top round of injera bread in this package. And I'm gonna use that as my roll that I tear off of and pick up the food. I'm just gonna set it off to the side. So close here. Ooh, a lot going on here. So let's just get this on my plate. It's okay if the injera is hanging off the side. And now for the good stuff, the shirawat is nice and steaming hot. While the shirawat was cooking, I did add in a little bit more water just to make sure this didn't get too thick and pasty while it was cooking. Just look at the texture, the color. I know you can't smell through the camera, but man, this smells so good. And and that's because of the Burberry spice. And I'll start with just a little, well, no, I'm taking that back. I'm putting lots of this Shirawat on my plate because why not just eat up it's so good. My family offhandedly calls this baby food because sometimes when you order shirawat in a restaurant, there's really not a lot of texture and it's pretty much a puree. That doesn't really bother me. I'm okay with very little texture in my shirawat, or in this case, you can see, you know, all the stuff that I was throwing in there during the cooking process. Alrighty, here we go. Time to try this shirawat. This is the very first time I've I've made sure a lot myself. That is some insanely tasty food. Oh my goodness. Mm. I'm genuinely not saying that as a flex. What I am saying is that the ingredients do all the work themselves. If you can just follow basic cooking instructions, watch what's happening in the saucepan and make sure that nothing burns or somehow comes out of the saucepan like over boils, you're gonna get some fantastic shirawat if you follow the recipe. I'm gonna save this right now to put it on record and make it official. Shirawat is my favorite favorite way to get protein as a vegan. Well, everyone, that's the end of this Shirawat recipe. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you had never heard of Shirawat before, I hope you go and try this. I mean, it may be a little difficult depending on where you live to find injera bread, but at the very least, go and try to make the actual shirawat stew and you can eat it with rice or pita bread or some other starch. It doesn't have to be injera. Let me know what you thought of this recipe down in the comment section. I read every single comment that you leave for me. I love to hear your feedback and it's nice to make things that I know reflect the kind of food you'd like me to prepare on this channel. If you like this episode and are looking for for more Ethiopian recipes than I have two in mind for you. I have a recipe episode on misirwat, which is red lentil stew. And the second recipe is called kik alicha. That's a yellow split pea stew. You could also call them a sauce. Whenever you say what in Amharic, which is the Ethiopian term for what this is, shirawat or misirwat, it just means kind of this liquidy stew that you put on injera and eat. The misirwat and kik alicha recipe episodes are linked for you at the very end of this video so go and check those out thank you so much for watching everyone take care eat well and i will see you in the next episode on this channel bye